So in today's video, we're gonna talk about the new A2L refrigerants that are coming out that are replacing 410A refrigerant here in the US. During the making of this video, 410A refrigerant has begun the phase down process and some states have already approved these new A2L refrigerants. Now, currently, the two that we're being told that are going to replace 410A here in the US are R32 and R454B. And one of the questions that you guys have been asking in our comments section a lot is, with these new refrigerants that are coming out, how do they compare to 410A? Are the pressures significantly different? And I'm being told, I have not personally been able to lay hands on either one of these refrigerants. The state I live in has not approved these refrigerants yet. And so I have not personally laid hands on them. But I've been told by other folks that have, R32, for example, has been used for years upon years in other countries. And I'm being told that the pressures are similar, that they're somewhat close, that there's not a significant difference. Years ago, when we phased out R22, we saw a significant increase in the pressures, the working pressures of the refrigerant to be able to continue to get the same temperatures, the delta T and all the things that needs to work properly for the system to be able to remove heat from the home, we saw a significant increase in pressures going from R22 to R410A. But the thing is, now that we're going to these new A2L refrigerants, we're being told that the pressures are not significantly different, that they're at least somewhat close. There's not gonna be hundreds of pounds of pressure added or reduced. And so the comment that we keep getting, we did a video on R32 specifically recently, and one of the comments that seems to keep popping up is, hey, can I just put R32 in 410A? Some of you guys have done your homework and you know that R410A is actually comprised of two separate refrigerants, one of them being R32. So can I put R32 in my 410A system? Will it work? Short answer is, I don't know. I don't know what would happen specifically. Would it work if you were to put it in there? But I think I can point out a few things that you should know before you were to do something like that. First of all, R32 is not an approved drop-in refrigerant replacement refrigerant for 410A refrigerant. And so because of that, if the system were say under warranty and you were to do something like that, it would obviously void the warranty. In fact, I'll even go one step further and say most manufacturers, if you were to put any refrigerant, even if it is an approved drop-in or replacement refrigerant for that original intended refrigerant to be replaced, if you were to replace it with any refrigerant, approved or not approved, it's most likely going to void the warranty. I just wanna point that out very quickly. If you're watching this video and you're thinking about doing something like that, adding anything to that system, refrigerant, oils or lubricants, leak seal, anything that you add to that system that the manufacturer has not approved could void your warranty. Next, although the pressures are very similar, there's not a significant increase or decrease in the working pressures of R32, the temperature, the discharge temperature is significantly higher. So this will increase the wear and tear on things like the compressor. If it's not intended to use that much heat and the compressor is getting hotter than it was originally intended, compressors get hot enough, right? If you're using the refrigerant you're supposed to use, and then you go putting in refrigerants that are not intended to be used in that system, and you are increasing the wear and tear on that system, you are making certain components hotter than they were intended to operate at, and you could have significant breakdowns just because you were to switch the refrigerant. But I will say that when you're replacing 410A with these new A2L refrigerants, we are being told that you are going to be able to reuse things like the line sets, that the line sets do not necessarily need to be replaced, that you can, as long as you do what you're supposed to, such as flushing them if you have any acidity on that line from a compressor breakdown or something like that, but as long as you're taking care of those line sets, pressure testing them, pulling a good vacuum and all the things you're supposed to do, then you will be able to reuse the line sets and things like that. Now we've talked about that in other videos, but the last thing I will just point out, if you are just somebody that likes to experiment, maybe you're a little more handy than the average homeowner, or maybe you are some sort of professional 
and you just want to see what it'll do, see if it'll operate or whatever, I just want to point out one last thing, and that is you may be breaking EPA regulations when you are putting refrigerant that is not designed to be in that system in that system. And that can come with a whole nother set of challenges. So ultimately, I think the answer to the question, just to, in summary, if you were to ask me straight out, can I replace 410A? Can I put R32 in the same system? And the answer in short is no, you should not do that. You could be causing yourself a lot of headaches and the little bit of money that you might be saving, you might be creating more headaches and possibly more investment in the future just because you were just trying to save a few bucks and put the wrong refrigerant in there. I would not do it. I wouldn't even try it. I wouldn't even experiment with it if it were me. And I would just be very careful doing things like that. I hope that helps. If you are in the market for a heating and air system and you're looking at these new refrigerants or still looking at 410A, let us know about that. Please comment down below. I'd love to hear your thoughts and what you're going through with while you're choosing, making this big decision. Thanks for watching. Please hit that subscribe button. We'll see you next time.